The sink before me was not a trough or a restaurant pit. It was a standard domestic double sink. Before I started, I stacked items in their washing order. First the dinner plates, then the side plates on top. In a separate stack, dessert bowls, salad bowls and cups and glasses. All the cutlery I placed in a saucepan. Once the water was hot and soapy, I dropped in the cutlery made of fine steel, a set left to us by a Dutch friend. She died of a vigorous and nasty cancer, and my wife lay beside her and wrapped her in love to keep her warm as she died. You can't wash those items and not remember the silverware my mother bought to celebrate her marriage to a man who saved her sanity and her life and who gave her all the things denied her in her own family. The plates given to us by my father. I never thought you two would last, he said, as he handed my wife the box of fine china. It wasn't you we were worried about. <laughs> it was him until you came along. Jack was a hopeless case. I left the cutlery to soak and only washed items with a soft cloth. The silver came to us with scratches, and I decided they would be the last. The fine steel came unscratched, because our Dutch friend was a meticulous woman who cared for all things. When my mother died, she left us her silverware, and I particularly enjoyed caring for those shining items. She had clearly used high scrubbers, but in my house they're banned. Back in the early 1970s, in Elat, an Israeli city on the Red Sea, just around the bay from Jordan's Aqaba, I washed pans, trays and tabletops for an Israeli baker. He was a harsh and insulting man and never missed an opportunity to shout at me in the Bedouin labour force. Fuck, man, idiot. I want pants. Why the fuck you don't finish? Ken, ani, nuni, slicha. My Hebrew was not fluent, but I learned enough to get by and I needed this phrase to cope with the schmuck. Loosely translated, it meant, yes, I'm stupid. Excuse me.